So today, I'm going to share the five most common culprits that will sabotage your ability to recover from peripheral neuropathy. You don't want to miss this. Coming up. So you may have heard me say in the past that nerves are the slowest healing tissues in your body and can take anywhere from one to two years to fully heal under the correct conditions. Now, as slow as that is under the right conditions, imagine what might happen to your nervous ability to repair and regenerate with significant roadblocks bombarding the body. So I'm going to uncover the five biggest culprits that will sabotage your nerve recovery to help you maximize your nerves healing potential. So let's start with number five, vitamin D deficiency. 42% of the American population is deficient in vitamin D. This vitamin plays an enormous role in our bodies. Vitamin D can reduce cancer cell growth. It can help control infections and reduce inflammation. Along with that, it also improves our body's ability to absorb other nutrients like calcium, which is imperative for healthy functioning nerves. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. This vitamin is crucial for nerve growth factors. This is a protein necessary for the development and survival of nerve cells, especially the ones that transmit pain, temperature, and touch sensations. Low levels of vitamin D prevent the peripheral nerves from conducting the proper signals and at the proper speeds, leading to dysfunction and damage of the nerves. Now, you might say, but I live in Texas, Arizona, California, Florida, or some other sunshine state or country, and I'm always outside, so I can't possibly be deficient in vitamin D. <laughs> well, think again, and get ready for a few important side notes. One, people with darker colored skin tones, like myself, have a difficult time manufacturing vitamin D from sun exposure. This is because the melanin in our skin doesn't allow the absorption of as much UV radiation, which is mandatory for the production of vitamin D. The darker a person is, the less vitamin D that they'll be able to manufacture from sun exposure in their body. On the contrary, people with white skin tones can absorb quite a bit of UV radiation and can better produce this sunshine vitamin. It's important for you to know where your vitamin D levels are at. You can walk into any lab and get this testing done and health insurance will cover it. If you don't have health insurance, don't worry. You can go into a place like any lab tests now or another type of walk-in lab where you don't need a script from your doctor and you can get this lab test done for about $129. It's money well spent. Lab values list normal ranges as between 30 nanograms per milliliter to 100 nanograms per milliliter. Now, that's a pretty big range between 30 to 100. In functional medicine, we always analyze what is the optimum level for the body to maintain to restore health. So for vitamin D, your optimum level should be between 60 to 100 nanograms per milliliter. Whenever I'm working with a patient that falls below 50, I always consider this deficient because I know how much vitamin D the body requires daily to restore health. So if you were deficient, how much vitamin D should you take? Well, obviously, this depends on how deficient you are. For my patients, I always recommend they start with at least 10,000 IUs or 250 micrograms daily of vitamin D3. And I make sure that they take that with vitamin K2 to maximize the absorption and utilization. If their lab values are closer to 30 or below, I'll place them on 20,000 IUs for at least 90 to 120 days to get their levels back up to optimum. I'll leave a link for you down below for a good quality brand of vitamin D complex with K2 already in it. Moving on to number four, diet. Now I'm going to approach this from a few different angles. Obviously I'm going to talk about processed foods, refined carbs, sugary beverages, and artificially sweetened beverages. Guys, there's just no getting around this. And the sooner you stop resisting this, the faster you'll head on the road to nerve recovery. But this time, I want you to have an understanding as to why or how this interferes with your recovery from peripheral neuropathy. 
When I use the term processed foods, I'm not just talking about fast food or junk food. I'm referring to anything that comes in bags, cans, jars, or boxes. This results in essential nutrients being stripped away during the processing methods. Although the manufacturer may add some nutrients, and the key word is some, back in, they put in synthetic and poor quality nutrients. Also, these foods are laden with sweeteners, which cause insulin resistance, as well as artificial sweeteners. They include processed salt. Now, this isn't to be confused with healthy, good quality sea salt, which is abundant in trace minerals. And they'll also include artificial flavors. Wait, it gets worse. They usually have tons of hydrogenated fats, coloring, chemical emulsifiers, and chemical preservatives to make them look prettier, taste better, and last forever on the store shelf. So here's the problem. Aside from the fact that most of these chemicals are carcinogenic and a huge contributing factor to the escalating rates of cancer in children and adults, they are depleted of critical vitamins, minerals, and nutrients like B1, B3, B6, B12, folate, zinc, magnesium, and trace minerals that your nerves rely upon for repair and regeneration. Okay, on to number three, being a cave dweller. The average American spends more than 90% of their life indoors. We're turned into a nation of cave dwellers where we spend almost all of our time cooped up indoors, whether it's at the job or at home. And to make matters worse, when you're at home, most of the time you have the blinds closed with very little sunlight coming through. Well, being a cave dweller has profound effects on your nerve health. First of all, it contributes to low vitamin D levels. Secondly, as a cave dweller, you end up sitting most of the time, which leads to stagnant blood flow or decreased circulation. This decreases the amount of oxygen and nutrients delivered to the nerves that are vital for the nerves well-being, not to mention their ability to heal. Third, being a cave dweller causes decreased serotonin levels the hormone responsible for our sense of well-being, calm, and focus. In my video on rewiring the brain, I go into the importance of serotonin. I'll leave a link for you below so you can check it out now after this video. This hormone is extremely important in maintaining a positive attitude while you heal and preventing cortisol levels uh, that raise inflammation from getting too high. So how much time should you spend outside in nature? Scientific studies reveal that spending as little as 20 minutes outside in nature three times a week had an enormous physical and mental healing benefits. So get ready for a side note here, guys. People who spend this time in nature outside and use their cell phone, whether talking or texting, saw none of these benefits. One last thing. The longer people spent in nature, for instance, 20 minutes every day or more, the more significant health benefits they received. So as soon as you're finished watching this video, put down your phone or your tablet, walk away from your computer or TV and get outside. And when you get there, don't forget to take a few deep breaths to flush out the stale air from your lungs and oxygenate your body. Okay. On to number two, lack of exercise. Now, wait a minute before you throw a shoe at me because you're thinking, how insensitive of you. You know those of us that have severe neuropathy simply can't exercise. Okay, guys, I'm not talking about going out and running a marathon today or taking up Zumba. I'm talking about getting started with your neuropathy exercises. I filmed several videos for you to use. Don't worry, I'll include the links below, but I filmed a full length 20 minute version. And for those who can't even do 10 minutes of exercise without the neuropathy getting worse, I broke down each exercise separately. So you can start with just one or two exercises that will take less than five minutes and won't flare you up. Being active can reduce your blood sugar, improve your blood flow to your nerves, and slow down nerve damage. It will also increase your endorphin release, which are your happy hormones that help decrease your pain levels. Okay, 
Moving on to the number one culprit for sabotaging nerve repair, it's alcohol. Alcohol slows down nerve repair and in many cases can prevent it. Part of the reason is that it makes it more difficult for the body to absorb B vitamins, especially B1, B6, niacin, folate, and B12, which are critical for nerve function and nerve repair. Also, regular alcohol consumption decreases the effectiveness of insulin, leading to insulin resistance and elevated blood sugar levels. Another problem is that alcohol inhibits the function of neurons or nerves. It reduces their ability to transmit or fire electrical impulses to the brain. This can result in abnormal nerve communication, which gets misinterpreted as many of the different symptoms we see with peripheral neuropathy. Not to mention the fact that the breakdown of alcohol in the body results in a toxin that can cause direct damage to the nerves. So, how much alcohol is too much? Well, science has revealed that even people who drink one to two glasses of wine, beer, or other alcoholic beverages daily cause substantial damage to peripheral nerves. So let's look at this analogy. If there's a building that's on fire and the fire department is trying to put it out with their hoses, but you're on the other side of the building spraying gasoline into the fire, well, how effective do you think the fire department will be with extinguishing that fire? It's the same process for your nerves. If you're taking a nerve support formula and maybe even using photobiomodulation, but you're still consuming, let's say conservatively, even three to four beers a week, your body is still going to struggle to put out the fire and repair the damage. This will give you the largest setbacks. Well, gang, that's it for today. I hope I helped shed some light on things that may be interfering with your nerve recovery. Making these changes in your life can be a huge game changer in healing your peripheral nerves and finally being able to reclaim your life back. If you've enjoyed our videos, the best way you can support us is by liking this video and sharing it with others. This really helps neuropathy sufferers know there's hope and they're not alone. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to get notified as soon as we publish new videos. Until next time, my friends, I look forward to seeing you on the road to great nerve health. Blessings. Dale, 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 I come and you wanna go home. Okay, sorry.